Help us to share your peace with others. To live our lives more like Christ every day. In his name we pray. Amen. <laughs> We go to our prayer again. Is there any prayer concerns or praises? The congregation needs to be aware of this morning. Thank 
so that we may have a clear path to you, and that all we have to do is accept the life that he brought to all of us. We ask, Lord, for the guidance and protection as we try to remember this during Advent and to your holy season of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Facebook accounts, find something they posted years ago, 
and say, oh, you're an evil person for saying this five years ago or ten years ago. It's interesting, isn't it? We see it all the time, hear about it all the time in the news. Kevin Hart, remember, he was supposed to host this, you know, you don't know who he is, he's a very famous comedian. He's supposed to host this award show, and somebody found a tweet that he had written on that tweet app, that, you know, that old Twitter, like five years ago, and it, it was a joke. It was obviously he was kidding, but people were like, I'm offended by this, you're evil. And they, they kicked him off. He wasn't allowed to host the show anymore for something he said five years ago. That's not love. That's not compassion. It says it right here in Corinthians. It keeps no records of wrong. And the beauty of God's love is no matter what you have done, if you've accepted the light of Christ, there is no wrong you have done that will be kept on record. You will have a list full of all your sins. And when Christ accepts you in, it is now erased. It's gone. No longer exists. That's the love of God. That's the compassion God brings us. I mean, I, so many of us, we, we always hope, you know, love is patient, love is kind. We always remember those parts. You know, some of us need to remember the patient part, but you know, here it is. It does not envy, though. It does not boast. Well, here in America, we struggle with that one, don't we? It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self seeking. It is not easily angry. Boy, some of us in 2020 need to wake up. We're forgetting what love really is. And then it goes, it keeps no records of wrong. All of your sins are forgiven. Not only are they forgiven, they are forgotten. They are erased from your past. That's how amazing the love of God is. And then it moves on to says, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And so love does not like us to continue to do evil things. And that's one thing I really get ticked off about my colleagues. You know, other ministers, other people get up here and preach, and they sugarcoat the scriptures. They don't tell you all the stuff that the Bible says not to do. They try to twist it, and then if they say it's okay to delight in evil, it's okay to do all these bad things as long as you come back to church. Ashley has a relative, and they were talking about, and they go to a much larger church than ours, and uh, they were talking about, you know, is it okay to do this on the weekends, do that on the weekends? Of course, they're talking about partying, but she was going, like, extreme. Like, you know, my goodness, how in the world are you still living type of partying? And that minister looked at her and said, as long as you come in on Sunday, it's okay. Hmm. It's okay to get so drunk you don't know what you're doing. It's okay to abuse your body. It's okay to go out and do God knows what while you were on these drugs. As long as you come in church. Not as long as you repent and try not to do it again. Not that your sins have been washed and you need to get better. He just said, come in church and be all right. Not right? Where does it say that in the Bible? Likewise, we sugarcoat love. We just live in this patient and kind and not envy, but we don't read on down. We might read the whole, it doesn't keep records for all. That's kind of nice. But then right after that, it says it doesn't rejoice in evil, it doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. In other words, you shouldn't be okay with sin if you are truly loving. You should not be okay with the evils of this world if you truly love. But delight when the truth comes forward, even if that truth means that your life has to change. And then it goes on to say, and always protect, it will always trust, and always hope. It will never fail. This is a beautiful thing, and I have to say, my brothers and sisters, 
The light of Christ is something truly amazing to behold. Hope, peace, joy, and love is a combination of all four. You cannot get to Christ without all four. And that's why I say, if you are at the part where you say, I hope, <coughs> you need to grow. That's your starting point. You need to get to peace next. Then you need to get to joy. And then you need to get to love. And then you will have a complete set and be able to get to Christ. You don't believe me? Then we're going to go back to that same chapter. Verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. If I speak with tons of men and angels, but I have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have a gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I'm not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but not love, have not love, I gain nothing. Without love, you cannot reach Christ. That's what that scripture is saying. Without love, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Without love, you have gained nothing in the eyes of God. We can have the most beautiful, amazing, poetic voices. We might be able to speak every language in this world. But if we do not love thy neighbor, if we do not love this world, we do not love our God, we have failed to reach the light we want in the kingdom. I like this next one. If I have the gift of prophecy, but it can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, I can have all the signs of knowledge in the world. I can know the answers to the entire universe. I can explain everything. But without love, I am nothing. I can have faith that can move them out. You all realize faith and love are two different things. We can believe in God and not love God. Okay? If you believe the devil exists, we don't love the devil, right? Many Christians, we believe that devil exists, but we don't love the devil. So you can believe in God and not love God. You can believe that your neighbor is there, but you may not love him. We can have the faith to move a mountain, but without love, we are not. You see, Paul's dropping some truth on the people of Corinth. This church struggled. They were all about their image. They were all about knowing things. They were all about trying to have control of what was going on in the world. He's like, you guys don't get it. You're missing love. Love gives you zero control because God's in control. When you truly love, God is guiding you. When you truly love, you have the light of Christ going around following the Lord's will. It starts with hope. But without peace, without joy, without love, we can't reach Christ. And if you have lived a long time at the hope stage, I encourage you to go home and pray, and reflect, find a quiet place and talk to God. It's weird. Anyone in y'all remember any of y'all go out and just randomly talk to God on your own? I know a couple of y'all do. You may not want to admit that. I did. Okay? I have to say, first couple times I did it, it was weird. I felt dumb. I felt foolish talking to the air. First time I remember doing it, I, I just was having a bad day, and I just walked out to the middle of that day to the next hill over. I walked all the way over. I was just walking. I just sat down in the middle of this field we just cut it a couple days before and I just lay down there. Of course, you know, you need a fresh cut field that's not very soft. Hey, right? You know, you know, alfalfa and in in the, in the red clover and everything sticking in the back. And I just laid there and started talking. And I felt foolish. It's unusual to talk to God, but I say it is crucial. Because the times, as I did it more and more and more comfortable, I got it, because it helped me not only work out my emotional thoughts, it helped me figure out my relation, it helped me reflect on these scriptures, because I'm not allowing the world to distract me from what I need to do. 
And I encourage you to do the same thing. It'll be weird the first couple times you do it. You don't have to go in the middle of a hay and lay down like I did, especially when it was fresh and cut, you know, that, that looked smart. Very uncomfortable and itchy. I shouldn't have done that. That's why I'm about so weird. Too busy worrying about itchies. But I encourage you to find this, this habit. Make yourself have time to reflect. We live in a busy world. Of course, in 2020, we've had time to slow down a little bit, haven't we? Everything's shut down, can't go nowhere. Slow down a little bit. Have time to reflect and get past hope and move to the peace. And once you get peace, take joy in the knowledge that God's will shall be done. And take all three of those candles and light that candle of love. Let it grow. Because without love, this scripture, it says, you're nothing but a noise without love. You are nothing without love. You have gained nothing without love. What is the point of living in this world without love? Oh, it, it's so nice to sit down in those verses below it, right? Where it's patient and kind, all that stuff. We like those. But we forget that if we don't love, we have gained nothing from living. Without love, we can't even get to Jesus. So many of us. You remember that sermon? I, it's been probably two years ago since I've done this sermon. I said, most Christians miss heaven by 18 inches. Okay? 18 inches is a reference of the average distance from your brain to your heart. Most of us know Scripture. We have the knowledge. We have what the, we know what right and wrong is. But we forget to connect the dots down to our heart and worship with love. And without that love, we are short from the glory of God. Boy, we love hope. Movies love hope. The media loves hope. We like that hope thing because it's safe. I say I hope, that also means that that's what I want, but I could be wrong. We get to the level of peace, of knowledge, now we know something. Then we get to, we actually enjoy being these weirdo Christians. And then we bump up to that love thing. Oh, man. But so many of us, we get scared. We stop right here. And that's, what, that's the devil working on you. That's the evils of this world saying, no, don't move past this point. Because they know. Satan knows the scriptures. Remember, he quoted it to Jesus when he tempted Jesus out of the desert. He knows it takes this journey to get to Christ. And so he's going to keep you down here at hope because that's the comfort one. That's the one that makes you feel safe. But it also allows a little bit of fear to be in there. I might be wrong, but I hope. Without growing, we'll never get the light of Christ. Think about that as you go home today. We reflect on this journey of Advent. And this is what Advent is about, symbolizing all the joys that we go. So we'll go to our invitation and one will remind you. That it's more than just hope. It's more than just peace. It's more than just joy. We have to have that love in order to reach Christ in its purest form. So we'll go to our invitation hymns. We'll open up the altar for personal prayer if you'd like to come forward and Recommend yourself to the Lord. <laughs> Be more than happy to extend the hand of Christian fellowship. Our invitation in the lead three teams is hymn number 166, which is in verses 1 and 5. <laughs> Thank 